You're saying ew because of the toots? Yeah. Are you tooting on my podcast? Yeah. Boys. Hi everyone. Welcome to episode 41 of the Elo and Stitch podcast. I am your host, Kristen. I hope you can hear me over the drone of the cicadas outside, and I am here to talk to you about what else? Knitting. I will also be talking about all things knitting and yarn related and probably not so related sometimes. Um, so if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I'm a semi-retired knitting pattern designer, a knitting instructor, uh, an all-around knitting enthusiast. I am podcasting from my home in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C., where I live with my husband, a very tall man from Peru, and my two little boys, JJ, who is eight, and Ollie, who is almost seven, and obviously also uh, a dog. <laughs> uh, when I am not knitting, I also enjoy vegetable gardening, yoga, drinking wine, but it is mostly about the knitting, so let's go ahead and start talking about it. Let's start off right away with some on and off the needles in this episode. I don't have any um, hand knits to share. It is now June. I will not be wearing hand knits again until at least October. I do have my whatever speckles your yarn shirt from uh, Fiber for the People, but other than that, um, no screenshot, no what I'm wearing. But I do have uh, some projects that I've made some progress on. Some. Um, Nothing new off the needles yet, though. So I think the thing I have made the most, well, the thing I've made the most progress on is the uh, test knit I'm doing, but that's super secret and I cannot show that to you. But other than that, uh, I guess I've made the most progress, and here I am right in the middle of a row, how irritating, <laughs> on my Ridgeview tee, which of course, since I'm in the middle of a row, looks like nothing. Let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, that's better. So this is the back of my Ridgeview tee. So I have knit all the way up to the armholes. And this is, I am, there are three lengths provided. So I am knitting the slightly cropped version, which has a body that's about 10 inches. Um, and the way that this is done is it just has these little cap sleeves. So you actually, at this point, start increasing to make the little sleeves. So I have done that. Um, I have, I think there are four increased rows. I've only worked one so far. So I have at least gotten that far. I am very happy with this so far. The textured patterning is just gorgeous. Um, of course, this is the back and the front. Let me see if I have a picture. The front is the part with this really nice um, detailing. So the back, yeah. Right, so you can actually see, so you can actually see mine's almost the same color. Um, and so the front has this sort of Oh, like v-neck but not open just filled with a different texture um, and you can also kind of see here how that sleeve shaping works so the back is a little bit less interesting but I am almost done with it and very excited to be able to hopefully move on to the front soon um, I am knitting this in a wool cotton blend, so I'm still not going to be able to wear this, um, you know, again until maybe late September. It's just generally speaking too warm around here um, for any kind of wool, unless you are in, you know, someplace that's super over air conditioned. And if uh, that were the case, then I don't think a short sleeve top would be a great choice anyway. Um, so the more I look at it, um, the more I'm really happy that I opted for this um, alternating cable cast on. I think it looks really good at the bottom. Um, almost gives it that tubular cast on look, um, but a much, much easier to work. Um, but again, as I said in a previous episode, I need to make sure I remember to do the same thing on the front because it, um, 
it altered the patterning, you know, the patterning is like knit one, purl one, but because the way I cast on, I had to do purl one, knit one, and I need to remember uh, about that. But otherwise, this is going smooth sailing and is a great, you know, easy to work on knit at any time. So that is the main non-design, non, um, super secret test knit project that I have been working on. The dog has thoughts about that. The other thing that I have been working on, you know, here and there, um, mostly I have been keeping this in JJ's room so that at bedtime I could put in a couple of rounds. Um, and that is, it is now June and this is still the first sock from the first pair of socks for the supposed six mystery socks that I'm gonna knit this year. So I am not moving very quickly. Um, I, I really like this, this stitch pattern and I am now ready to start the heel. So at least I have made a little bit of progress. Um, no particular reason, just that it's um, not sort of the the simple mindless knitting that you can carry everywhere with you. So you gotta be focused on this pattern um, and you've got two balls of yarn to wrangle. So certainly nothing wrong with the pattern, but again, I'm really happy um, with the colors that I picked. I think they were working really well together and this is a really fun, um, and it's actually extra thick and squishy um, stitch pattern for these. Um, and I am going to start the heel now, but again, first sock from first pair of what were supposed to be six new socks this year. Um, so if you want more details about that, you can you know, go back and watch some of the previous episodes. The idea is I put together you know, six bags with uh, six balls of yarn or possibly more for two colors and six patterns. I put them in the bags. I don't know what's in what, so I just I'm supposed to every two months pick a bag and knit a pair of socks and um, it is, it's not going very quickly, but at least they're cute. So I, I did, I took this bag back out of my son's room because now I need to um, focus on the heel, which is not something I can sort of do um, while the kids are hopping and bopping around at bedtime, but some progress is being made there. Not much though. I am keeping this project in this really cute little project bag that I've had for a while. <laughs> it says lay flat to dry. <laughs> and I think that's so cute. So at least it has a cute project bag, but uh, it, is, it is going nowhere fast. Uh, just like my Clio, I'm not even going to show you because I really haven't made any progress on it whatsoever. Um, I do have some progress on my latest Finish Fix Frog project. So if you want to check that out, um, you can visit the latest one of my Finish Fix Frog vlogs. Um, Finish Fix Frog is my 2021 year long power through my whips project um, that is going okay. And the Finish Fix Frog vlogs are usually 10 to 15 minutes as opposed to the podcast. Uh, which is anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes and sometimes even longer. Um, that's where you can find some information about those projects. Um, I somehow have a lot of stuff going on for designing, even though I'm not supposed to be designing. So let's move on to Adelante. As I said, I'm not really supposed to be designing. I'm supposed to be retired with uh, maybe the occasional you know, just for fun pattern thing going on, but I seem to keep, um, I guess it's a hard habit to break. So the first thing is that I'm making really pretty good progress on my updated De Hello Charlotte sample. So, um, you can see in the previous episode, I talked a lot about this, um, so I'm not going to drone on about it too much, but I do want to show you the progress I'm making. So this gradient is just beautiful. You can see it starts out with this kind of a dusty pink 
into the red, the brown, now we're into this really yellow, yellowy gold. Um, so I need to bring, I did actually did uh, get my scale and see how much of this is left um, and decide when I'm going to start decreasing for the opposite side of the of the shawlette. Um, again, the idea here is that this shawlette can be any weight and 400 yards or more. Um, you just kind of have to keep an eye on your yardage so you know how much you're using and when to switch to the opposite side of your shawl. So it's not looking super deep at this point. But this project, again, it involves um, dropping stitches, which is going to open it up lengthwise a bit more. So I'm not quite ready to transition yet, but I think it's going to be coming up soon. And I may actually uh, have this done in time for this pattern re-release, which is going to be on June 18th. So um, currently the De Hello Shawlette is only available from Knit Picks, but on June 18th I will re-release it. Uh, as an independent pattern and you'll be able to um, purchase it directly from me on Ravelry or Payhip uh, and that updated pattern will include instructions for, as I said, any weight yarn, 400 yards or more. Um, I'm really just, this gradient is so <laughs> perfect. I just, it's, the blending job here is just phenomenal. So again, as I said the last time, I don't really need uh, a new sample because I actually already got two sam two new samples from sample knitters um, but I really just wanted to showcase it in uh, this yarn in a more rustic kind of yarn which is what this is so um, stay tuned we'll probably end up doing some kind of uh, auction or something um, for all these uh, samples of the De Hello Chalette that I will not need so that um, I have been making the most progress on. Um, I haven't really been doing much with my Going Steady sample. This is another pattern that I'm going to be re-releasing. This one is not going to be until July, um, so it's it hasn't gotten the priority that the Charlotte has. So it just looks mostly like it did last time. You know, I've separated for the sleeves and started knitting the body and working my increase rounds. Um, nothing, nothing too outstanding yet. Um, the high points of this one are pockets and uh, a big shawl collar and um, some contrast stripes on the sleeves, none of which you can see yet. So <laughs> it doesn't look like much of anything, but um, it is now June. I need to start making some more progress on this. Um, because I, I do want to re-release the pattern um, in late July so that people can get started on it for fall sweaters. Um, but it just hasn't gotten much attention recently. And then I had, um, I believe I had mentioned, even though I'm you know, retired from pattern design and that I'm not, you know, looking, it's not my, Careers on my job anymore. Uh, I was still interested in submitting some designs to third-party publications where they're going to handle the you know, tech editing and test knitting and, and all of that. Um, and so just take that off my plate, but I can still, you know, release a pattern. Um, but my responsibilities for it are, are fewer. <laughs> So I had done a couple of submissions and I submitted this idea for a pullover that has worked side to side with this uh, big cable kind of running across the neck. And the publication came back and said, um, you know, we just picked a few patterns for this collection. Um, we couldn't we couldn't include yours. You know, it just didn't fit with all the other stuff, but we would like to offer you yarn support. So then I was kind of dithering, like I really only wanted you know, to pursue patterns where somebody else was going to take care of all the heavy lifting and I was basically just going to produce the pattern and the sample. 
on the other hand, they're all free yarn support and that's free yarn. And you know, I would like to do this for the fall. So I really have quite a bit of time. Uh, so I was going back and forth about it for a while uh, and ultimately decided, yes, okay, um, I'll go ahead and do that. So um, they will be sending some yarn my way and in the fall, this will be released um, as a new pattern and hopefully <laughs> it's going to be my only new independent pattern release this year because any other patterns are either re-releases or they're uh, through a third party. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So that is something that is coming. I have one more um, submission outstanding um, and haven't heard back about that one yet. I have a good feeling about it. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. If not, I would probably either shop that pattern around some more or um, wait until the spring. Um, and now that I've said that, I forgot that there actually is another pattern that I'm maybe going to be working on. It's kind of a re-release. Um, I know in a lot of places you'll see people posting about chilly mornings and cool evenings in the summer. We really do not have that in Central Maryland. Um, it is especially once July is here, it is just hot and sticky and it cools down a little bit at night, but it's still so humid. It's not, you know, it's, it's still not comfortable. You will not be chilly. You will still be sweaty and sticky. Um, so that's not really a thing we have, kind of a summer sweater. But, um, you know, we do have places that are over air conditioned. Um, grocery store or, you know, a lot of office buildings. Unfortunately, I don't work in an office. Uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot more cicadas flying around today. That's making me unhappy. You know, they have been... I've, okay, we'll talk about cicadas later. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we do have a lot of over air conditioned places that it would be nice to have something really light, not a heavy sweater, something um, really light and drapey and just, you know, a, hopefully a cardigan to just you know, toss on when you're a little chilly and then, you know, easy to take off when you're ready to go back outside. Uh, so I was kind of doing some looking around on Ravelry, trying to find something that um, really kind of fit the bill of what I was looking for. So again, something uh, nice and drapey, something in a light, you know, fingering weight yarn, um, cardigan, something that's, you know, not using a really um, kind of soft, silky fiber. And I really couldn't find what I was looking for. Um, and then I was, I was looking at something. I was like, this is kind of like what I'm looking for, but it also, it looks a lot like my sound side pullover. And I thought, well, what if I just make my sound side pullover into a cardigan? <laughs> um, because it is fingering weight. Um, it is nice and drapey, you know, lit, knit at a loose gauge. It's just textured. It's nothing um, super fancy, but it has, you know, a few nice details. Um, and it's, you know, it's a simple drop shoulder. It's not like really fitted or anything. So it's going to be really comfortable. So I started thinking about that. And I was like, well, if I'm going to write a whole, you know, whole new pattern. We should change something up about it. And I was like, what if I put pockets? So instead of sort of, um, a regular pullover that, you know, ends maybe right around the hip, um, it could be sort of a, a longer drapey cardigan with pockets. So now I'm toying with that idea. Um, I really like it and, um, regardless, I might knit it for myself. <laughs> um, but if you would like to see that as a pattern, please leave a comment down below and let me know um, that that's something you're interested in. There is a link down below in the description box to the original pullover pattern. Um, I have already picked out yarn. <laughs> I don't know how these things happen to me. I'm really trying to 
to not design things, but it's just not going that well. So um, that may or may not be coming, um, but I really like the idea. And uh, like I said, I've already kind of picked out a yarn that I think will work. Of course, I, you know, if I do do it as a pattern, obviously I won't be able to wear it this summer because by the time it gets done, it will not be summer weather anymore. Um, so that sort of light, airy summer cardigan idea would be out the window for this year, but I am uh, still toying with that idea. So again, if you think that would be interesting, leave a comment and let me know. And uh, I think, you know, I've been talking for 10 minutes about the job I don't have anymore. That's all I have for uh, pattern design in this episode. I hope by the time um, I publish this episode, I have come up with a creative name for this segment. Um, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about sewing. Um, sewing is something that um, I've been interested in for a number of years, but never taken the plunge. Um, I don't know anything about sewing. My mom could do some like basic hemming and, and things. She never really taught me any of that. Um, so other than sewing on a button and doing some mattress stitch with my knits, my sewing experience is almost nothing. Um, but since last month was Me Made May, I had made a goal for myself to actually knit, to actually sew something with my sewing machine. So I would gotten a sewing machine a couple of years ago, never touched it, got a table for it, still never touched it um, because I just, you know, there just wasn't time to teach myself a whole new thing. Um, but with taking a step back from pattern design, um, with the kids being a little bit older and more independent and hopefully going back to regular school in the fall, I said, finally, I'm going to learn. So a while back, uh, I had purchased a class on what was then Blueprint, and it's now on Craftsy, it's a Craftsy bought out Blueprint. Um, I had uh, purchased this class and it kind of started watching some of the videos, like supplies you'll need, and so I picked up some, some stuff, um, but then didn't, kind of stopped there. So I bought some fabric and fabric shears and uh, that was about it. Um, so last weekend, no, the weekend before, we were going to take the kids on our first, first post-COVID, post-vaccine uh, outing, which was to day out with Thomas, um, which incidentally my children are, are really getting too old for, which is fine. Um, so it's up in Baltimore, it's uh, mostly outside, um, and the biggest part that you would need a mask for is to actually ride on Thomas, which is they put like a Thomas car at the front of the train. It's, and it moves its eyes and it says some stuff. Um, and I thought earlier in the month, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make masks, new masks for everybody um, to use for day out with Thomas. And I actually did it. So um, I watched the part of the class that is about how to use your sewing machine, like how it actually functions, how to, you know, thread the bobbin and, and all of that stuff. And I managed to, to make three masks with fabric I bought probably a year ago intending to make masks. So uh, my children are out right now wearing their masks. Um, my husband took the car to the shop and then um, took the bus back and now he needs to take the bus back to the shop to get the car and the children love public transportation so they're with him. But I will pop a photo in here of my masks. So you can see they're all Star Wars themed and there's one for uh, each of my kids and one for my husband. So I got to practice with three different sizes. Um, and definitely I can see some improvement between the very first one I did and then the third one, which was the one for my husband. Um, and I think, you know, for a beginner project, they turned out well. Um, they're not falling apart, <laughs> the, nothing's coming unsewn, uh, and they're really cute. So, 
I did that and uh, as is usual, I was like, well, this is obviously gonna be my new hobby. I'm just gonna sew all the time. Um, so trying to use that momentum, the class that I bought includes two projects and walks you through the whole thing. One of them is a tote bag and I'm just not interested in making a tote bag. I have so many tote bags. You know, I really, I want to learn to sew to sew garments. So I kind of, I watched through that, to, you know, just to, to observe, but I didn't actually want to make the tote bag. What I wanted to make uh, was the dress that is covered in this project. So this is what it looks like. Um, and this, unlike, I guess, knitting patterns, sewing patterns sometimes have various iterations of whatever it is. So you can see all the different kind of like short skirt, long skirt, long sleeve, short sleeves, no sleeves, things like that. So, um, but the one that we're working through in the class is the one that's right on the front, which has this like, you know, no sleeves, then an asymmetric hem. Um, and I thought that when I bought the class, I bought some fabric and I was sure that I bought enough for the dress. So I started watching the videos for the dress. I, you know, cut out the, the pattern pieces. I traced out the ones where you need multiple of the same piece. I did all of that. I washed and ironed my fabric and I got it laid out and was ready to start cutting out fabric pieces. And I did not have enough fabric. I need three yards or two and five eighths yards. And I only bought two yards. So that was a little bit of a bummer. Obviously I can use the fabric for something else. Um, and I had bought, you know, some other fabric and some other patterns, um, but none of the other fabric is enough. And I don't want to try any of the other patterns until I've like actually worked through this dress with the video and, you know, successfully more or less completed the dress, you know, completed a project that I'm basically being walked through before I try to do one on my own. So that's a little bit of a speed bump. Um, I have since ordered more fabric for the dress and it's really cute. Um, so I should be here soon. Um, and hopefully before my sort of sewing momentum and remembering the few things I've learned goes out the window, um, that will arrive and I can get started on trying to make this dress pattern. But um, we may or may not be seeing occasional sewing in upcoming episodes of Elo and Stitch. Um, I think I'm going to like it for the same reason that I like making knitting patterns and knitting and that it's kind of like a puzzle, you know, and I'm, I'm figuring out how to get all the pieces together. And that's, I guess, of interest to me or my brain anyway. So we shall see, but that is what I have for this episode. All right, news and events. Uh, I want to just remind you quickly about Vogue Knitting Live. In June, I am teaching two classes. Uh, and this is probably the last episode of the podcast I'm going to do before I actually teach those classes. So on Friday, June 11th, I think, 12, 13, yeah. Friday, June 11th from 7 to 9, I am teaching my Yes Word Swatch class, which is about... Um, you know, getting swatching right, getting gauge, you know, learning what gauge means and how to measure it and how to check it and what to do when you don't get it. So that's on Friday night. And then on Sunday afternoon from two to four, I am teaching my sweater jumpstart class, which is sort of a um, introduction to sweater knitting using a mini sweater. It's a mini top down raglan sweater. Um, and I'll be talking about the four things you need for uh, sweater success when you are just starting knitting sweaters or if uh, maybe you have tried before and haven't had much success. So that is on Sunday afternoon. And the um, link to register for Vogue Knitting Live June is down in the description box below. So I hope I will see you there. In other news, I am also about to start running my new free five day challenge, uh, five days to better sweaters. Um, so I have done a few of these, um, email challenges in the past. You may have done, um, Swatch Scholar and in the past I've done Sweater Jumpstart, same name, 
slightly different concept. Um, and this time I've just changed it up a little bit, five days to better sweaters. So we'll be doing the same thing, which is working through a mini sweater. In this case, it's gonna be a top-down circular yoke mini sweater, which when you're done, makes a lovely beer cozy or perhaps a Christmas tree ornament. Uh, and I will be sharing my five best tips for better sweaters. So the way these things work is you sign up. Uh, it will start on June 14th. Once it has started, you will get an email every day for five days. And each day you'll get my one tip for better sweaters and a piece of the mini sweater pattern. So again, this is going to be for people who either um, have wanted to, to start knitting sweaters but haven't taken the jump yet, um, or people who um, are looking to improve their sweaters. It is uh, completely free. When you participate, you will also get a discount code to be used on Sweater Siren, my four-week sweater knitting e-course and knit along, which is going to start on July 5th. So lots of good stuff going on free five day challenge, get some sweater knitting tips, get a cute little mini sweater. Uh, again, the link to sign up for that is in the description box down below. Um, there will be prizes. <laughs> By the time you're watching this, hopefully I will have uh, shared the photo of the grand prize. There will also be a couple of free patterns for people who are participating. This one is usually pretty popular, so I hope that you will join us. All right, so cicadas. I know I've been talking about them a lot. You can just skip, I'm just gonna put this part at the end. So, you know, you can skip it if you want to, but okay. It's so loud outside. It's it's not like the summer cicadas that kind of like the ebb and flow. It's just this constant, like a white noise machine. So it's like living inside a white noise machine. Um, I have seen a lot of shells. I have seen a lot of dead cicadas, but up until today I haven't seen a lot of alive cicadas. A few. I went out this morning and I saw one in my garden. I think they're back from their bus trip. Um, but sitting here doing this recording, I'm seeing a lot of cicadas flying around. That's what I don't like. As long as they stay in the trees, fine. But when they start flying around, they can get stuck in my hair. They're very clumsy. They bump into things a lot. I don't want them in my hair. So I don't know if this is a natural part of their process where now they're looking for mates and they're flying around more, but this is the part I don't like. Now, if I just see a cicada like sitting on the ground, okay, but flying around, getting stuck in my hair, no, I don't, I cannot handle it. It's very loud here today. There's cicadas, there's dogs, there's children playing Mario. Um, so yeah, I'm not happy about that. We've got a good four more weeks, maybe more, of the cicadas. Um, and they're still gross and I don't like them. So that's that. Um, other than that, my husband and I were able to have our first date night since well over, you know, probably last January or February. Um, you know, both got the vaccine and, um, it's been two weeks. So, um, we went out in Georgetown on Saturday night. It was, I mean, there were still people there, but it was definitely quieter than usual. And it got quieter and quieter as the evening went on. Um, so we went to a couple different places and you know, we had a cocktail first, um, down on the Georgetown waterfront. Then we went to, um, the restaurant where we had made a reservation, which is called Sushiria. So it's like a sushi ceviche place. Um, I forgot how overpriced DC is. So cocktails were like 15 bucks a piece. Uh, and I also had a beer, a Peruvian beer called Busqueña, which is really cheap and it was eight bucks. Um, the other thing that I don't really remember though is the cocktails uh, being so watered down. Um, so I had, I had a cocktail before dinner, at dinner I had a, a cocktail and nothing, so like no alcohol. 
um, which is not a problem, except that they're charging me 15 bucks for it. <laughs> anyway, um, food was good. Uh, we had a nice spicy ceviche, and then we had, um, we each got a sushi roll. Uh, my husband tried lomo saltado sushi, so lomo saltado is a traditional kind of beef stir-fry dish. Um, and so this was the beef on top of the sushi, which he liked quite a bit. I don't eat meat. Um, I do eat fish, but I don't eat beef, chicken, or pork. Um, so I couldn't really try that. But mine was good. I had a kind of salmon sushi. Um, and then after that, you know, it was 10 o'clock, maybe. And so we kind of walked around and we're like, maybe we'll stop at a bar, grab another drink or two, but everything was either closed or about to close at 10 o'clock on a Saturday in Georgetown. So it's definitely very strange. Um, it was also rainy, so I'm sure that didn't help, um, but it was definitely a little out of the ordinary. Um, you know, we felt very safe the whole time. Every place we went said, you know, masks, um, when you're not at your table, which was fine. There was plenty of space between people. Um, so we had a good experience. Um, it was nice to finally be able to go out and do something again. Um, but uh, also a little disappointing just seeing how, how much things have changed and how, you know, I'm sure it's gonna take a while for things to, to get back to normal. Um, not that I want things to be like super crowded and, um, you know, but I would like to be able to go out at 10 o'clock and still be able to get a drink with the, at a bar that is open. So, uh, if, I'm talking to the internet. So, um, we are starting to, that's a weird noise. Why are you doing that? You're saying ew because of the toots? Yeah. Are you tooting on my podcast? Yeah. Boys. You want to at least come over here and show people your adorable little face? No. No? So, that is that. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 41 of the Elo and Stitch podcast. Links to everything that I have talked about can be found in the show notes at nadiaperduana.com slash Elo and Stitch. Special thank you to my Patreon patrons who help keep this podcast and the Maybe Better One and Knits channel up and running. If you are interested in supporting the podcast and getting some perks and freebies and behind the scenes goodies, you can find more information at patreon.com slash maybeabirdwana. If you are here on the YouTube channel and would like to support the channel, you can do that by liking this video, subscribing, clicking that little bell that tells you when there is new content, leaving comments, sharing with friends, all of those things will help um, increase the reach of the channel. Still didn't get to see his cute face though. Well, it'll increase the, the reach of the channel and reach more knitters. Uh, if you are looking for me on social media, you can find me on Instagram as Nidia Perduana, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.